Hey everyone, a while ago I saw this effect that animates static over the black pixels in Bad Apple. It's so that you can kind of tell what's going on while it's playing, but if you pause the video all you see is noise. I thought it's cool, so I made a video tutorial teaching how to code it using JavaScript. And I also gave a challenge. Given this static uh, thing, can you reconstruct the original or get as close to it as possible? And four brave people accepted the challenge. James's algorithm looks at each pixel in consecutive frames and if significant changes happen, it nudges the value towards a darker color. Now, this nudging means some gray areas appear in the video, giving a motion blur kind of effect. I think it means it's not gonna match the original so well, but it does give a better understanding of the movement in the video. James also added colors into the mix. Quite creative, I think. He explains his implementation on this website and has a video demoing it next to the original. I appreciate the extra effort. Next is Explore Infinity. His idea is kind of similar. If the pixel has changed, mark it with a moving color. Otherwise, mark it with a static color. We can change these values using an interface, and there are other parameters too, like the fill threshold the algorithm uses to fill in gaps horizontally and vertically, and the pixel color change which says how much to interpolate between the previous image and the current one. Now, for small values this causes a blend between multiple frames, leading to a similar motion blur kind of effect as James's, but the value of 1 makes the video flicker, so not ideal either. Then we have Danny from Denmark. He implemented a quick solution, comparing multiple frames in a buffer and adding CSS blur and contrast filters to smoothen the noise and reduce the flickering. The comparison is done under a threshold, so there is no motion blur happening, but the CSS blur does generate few grey pixels around the edges. The web page allows tuning these parameters a bit. And last but not least, we have Peter, who also compares multiple frames and does spatial smoothing via 3x3 neighborhood voting. He keeps the output binary. It's either white for the static parts or black for those that change. No user interface to play with parameters, but the hard-coded setting seems to work pretty well. So now, how do I decide the winner? It's not easy, especially because some of the things Adrian pointed out. He said I'm only animating the static over pure black, but the original video had some grey regions as well. This is only a big problem in few parts of the video, like here, where there's this significant gradient. Only these pixels are pure black, and the white shown here is what the methods may be able to recover, not the original. Because of that, it's probably fairest to compare the results to this version of the video, but the participants were probably looking at the original when implementing their methods. So maybe they do some kind of magic trying to get close to it somehow. That's why I'll consider both and see if the winner changes. Now, I had to do a bit of coding to do the comparison. I included all the variants in a single project, used the default parameters and processed the video frame by frame. Originally, these were processing in real time, skipping some frames and it wasn't ideal for a fair comparison. Then I had to change some things in Danny's solution. I added the blur and contrast to the canvas instead of CSS, because I wanted the pixel-to-pixel -pixel comparison with the reference video, and I couldn't analyze pixel values from CSS. Now with everything ready, let's begin, taking this as the reference. The results from each method are here, and this row has the pixel-by-pixel -pixel comparisons. Black is good, it means a match, and red is a mismatch. Different intensities of red mean different levels of mismatch, so for this method, which produces a dark grey image in the beginning, it's close to the expected black, so the red intensities are not as high as for this lighter grey variant. We can also see these noisy points appearing more intense than the background. The percent on the right shows how close the image is from the reference, and the number on the left is the entire video up to this point. Now, as it starts playing, we start to see a trend. More blurry reds in the first two methods, and crispier outlines in the last two. And the outlines for the final one are noticeably thicker. It's because the blur-contrast combo is a kind of morphological dilation. Morphological closing might do the trick better. But anyway, I think it will be slightly worse than the third. Let's see.
I'm fast forwarding now to that part with the gradient and so far numbers are as expected. Here results match well because this is the reference, but it's quite far from the original. We'll see how those compare later, but now I'll fast forward to the end to see the final numbers. And yeah, these make sense. Now let's see what happens with the original as the reference. Fast forwarding to that gradient part and you can see how much red there is. Very low similarities here, causing somewhat lower values overall. But the ranking stays the same so far and fast forwarding to the end looks like it's a tie. Now I could have called it a day, average the scores and declare Peter as the winner. But Adrian said another thing too that there are problems caused by the compression when I made the static variant. So I have to evaluate again without compression artifacts. And do it twice. Once using this as the reference. And... Danny is now the winner. <laughs> and also these two flipped. Looks like Peter's and Explore Infinity's methods produced a more granular result this time. It seems they benefited from those artifacts that may have had a bit of a smoothing effect. Danny's method is handling those well because of the blurring step. And also seems like it's even better than before. I think it's because the dilation was essentially double previously. Once due to the smoothing from the compression artifacts and once because of the blur. Now it's just the blur, so the borders are thinner. Let's run it one last time, comparing to the original and Similar standing, no more surprises. All right, so now it looks like Danny is the winner. But that's only because Adrian noticed those issues and I took them into consideration. In a parallel universe where I wouldn't have done that, Peter would have won. And what if I wouldn't have used this pixel by pixel comparison and decided to focus on creativity or how smooth the animation looks? I really like these results. Actually, first I wanted to teach this effect instead of the static. Let me know if you want to see it someday. But then I chose the static because I thought this is more interesting. Anyway, when I saw the versions from James and Explore Infinity with the colors, they immediately reminded me of that one. So I liked them, obviously. And letting these multi-dimensional rankings combine, I declare everyone as the winner. Here's a list of videos I have ready at the moment. Send me a private message choosing one and I'll make it available to you. Thanks for participating, thanks for watching, and see you guys.